We are ready for decals. We're going to start with the home printed ones. We've got the ones printed on the clear decal film. We've got the ones on the white. We're going to start with the ones on the white uh, with our shark mouths. Um, great design I found online. Now I've, I've printed multiple copies of each on both the white paper and the clear paper, but especially, you know, with the clear, uh, if we don't get that color definition and depth that we want, we can lo uh, layer multiple um, decals on top of each other. The one thing that you gotta kind of watch out for is that this tends to be a lot thicker than professionally printed decals. So it, they'll build up quickly if you lay one on top of another on top of another, noticeably sometimes, depending on the film you're using. This is pretty good quality decal film. Um, so like when you're using um, on the clear film, you know, and I'm just gonna basically cut as, as small an area around these uh, Jolly Roger type decals as I can, but that, that clear carrier film will, will build up. Um, around the lettering and stuff. So we want to, we want to be careful about that. So uh, I am just going to start, I, I think the ones on in the middle actually came out the best. Unfortunately, these cool um, black kind of wrinkles around the mouth, I'm gonna have to paint them in manually when I'm done. So I'm just going to uh, start by roughly cutting out, and this is a brand new number 11 blade, just to make sure we've got a nice pointy knife to work with. And in order to make sure that we've got this held down real good and real steady, I'm just gonna give it a tape backing, you know, so that it doesn't go anywhere. Now, without a doubt, I'm gonna wanna move this around as soon as I have it taped down, watch. Right. But I'm gonna wanna get as close as I can. I might have to actually move the camera for this, um, but I'm gonna trace around that black line as best as I can. And this can be a slow process sometimes to make sure you get a really good result. I wanna try to eliminate any of the white carrier film uh, around the decal that we can. Removing that extra film as I go just gives me a sense of where I need, like I can see there's a little tiny area of white left to trim right there, and I can kind of get a good sense of my progress, and it's just personal technique that helps me out. Any extra white that I have around the end, uh, the edges, I can always clean up with a little bit of black on a fine brush. So where is this guy gonna go? Um, thinking right about there. Not on top of the spinner, or maybe even below, right around there, with the edge of the mouth leading towards the wing root. Um, and I think that looks like a good spot. I always try to use landmarking whenever I can to make sure that I get the decals that are gonna be on both sides positioned the same. So we have some panel lines we could use here. We have this cutout for the exhaust stacks. Um, so let me get this in the water. And this is also the first time I've used this brand of decal paper. So I'm hoping it's gonna work out really well. You also wanna use a relatively mild decal setting solution at first, um, you know, if you if you haven't used the paper before, you don't want to go super aggressive like solve a set uh, right away. You want to give it a, a little bit of a chance to work in. Now, with just a soft brush, we'll put a little bit of water on the surface there. Give the decal something to slide onto, and get it roughly into position, and just slide it with a finger, like you know. At this point, it's just like using any other decal. Okay. And with it wet, we can move it into a position we like. And I kind of like right there. And I 
think that works pretty well. Now I didn't get a really good landmark for kind of this little tail of the decal as to where it's going to be, um, but I think I can match that pretty well on the other side. Uh, it's not a natural mouth for the P51, which is why I want to use it. It's something that you normally don't see on there, but I like the way it looks. We're going to put the top of it right up at the exhaust stacks, um, and we'll put the tip of the mouth right up at the spinner. And this is a nice thin decal sheet, actually, it's decal film. It's kind of conforming right away. It looks nice. Um, To wrinkle up a little bit, but um, again, want to be very gentle with this film because I don't know it that well right now. But yeah, custom made decals are not that hard to do, they're really not, and people are a lot more afraid of them than they need to be. Uh, and that went on really, really nicely. So, um, let me get... Now you notice I didn't put the microsalt straight down on the surface like a lot of people do. Um, when I'm using, again, custom printed decals, I'll usually use that over the top and let it inch in around the seams. Um, so, you know, when I, if I'm using like professionally printed decals, I might prep the surface with it a little bit. But I, want, I really just want to see how this decal film is going to perform when I put it on before I start hitting it too heavily with setting solutions and such. So there we go. And still looks very purple in the light, but I think that right there, right away, starts starts changing up the look, making it look pretty cool. Um, now, the eye, if you take a look, is meant to go right back, kind of behind. I might have to shift that to be up on the black a little bit, a little bit forward. Uh, because there's going to be a lot of exhaust staining right there. And we don't want to lose that cool looking eye right there. But now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get the mouth on the other side and then we'll work on one of the next ones. I've been doing some more work with the decals and I've got a great chance to explain some of the stuff I was talking about before. So one of the things I was talking about was the, op the opacity difference printing on white versus clear decal paper. Um, this and this was both, they were both printed on clear. But you can see that the design was uh, just the way it, it worked out um, in terms of how it was, I don't know what the word is, formulated, structured, programmed, whatever, on the computer. Um, and they were both printed on, on high resolution and everything and uh, best quality. This is basically a nice, dark, very opaque, design on the decal paper. So I didn't need to double layer anything. This one, however, if you take a look, um, you can pretty much see the colors behind it. You can see the difference in colors in the background. So this is one that even though on the decal paper, and this is the clear decal paper, it looks, um, it looks pretty dark and it looks like you wouldn't have much trouble. You got to remember that the, the actual backing of the paper is white. So what you're seeing in this area is how it shows on a, a white background. So when we put it on the colored background here of the aircraft, you, you have a lot of bleed through. So I'm actually going to have to layer this decal twice to get a good um, opaque, good um, rich color for the actual decal and have it look like it was painted over the paint job on the aircraft. Another thing I was talking about was the thickness of the carrier film and how these um, these blank decal sheets tend to have a thicker carrier film, uh, thicker clear space around it than standard professional made decals. And you can kind of see it a little bit. I'm trying to find a good example. Um, this is actually a decal from the set itself, from the aircraft set, right? 
and when I rotate it, you see, you can see a little bit of the glossiness, but you don't see a lot of the decal film itself. Whereas when I rotate here, you can clearly see the defining boundary of that clear paper. You can actually sort of feel it with your finger too. It's a lot thicker. So if you can avoid having to layer on top, that's, that's good because those layers build up a lot thicker than uh, if you've ever worked with decals that are multicolored decals and you have to layer them on top of each other to get the finished effect. Um, it, it, this is a lot thicker than those. And you can see here, um, this decal here, uh, I've got a little bit of the, it looks like silvering, but what it is is there's a little tiny edge in between the colors and it's lifting up on that. So, you know, I'll use some heavier setting solution and everything to settle that down. Um, but you can definitely see how we have a slightly um, thicker carrier film than others. Like this is actually um, Games Workshop decals that I'm using as kill markings. And you can see pretty much some of these are single. These are single skulls, double skulls, um, four at a time skulls, and then I think three. And you can see almost no difference in them all because the carrier film is almost invisible. So just things, things to think about. And again, I'd be more than happy to do a whole video specifically on printing your own decals. But since I talked about that before and doing the decals on this, um, I've got a good chance to point those things out for you guys as I go through it all. I have markings mostly done. I mean, the decaling mostly done. Um, all the markings are finished. I'm, I'm doing some stenciling from some random um, P51 stencils I have. Um, can we get... No, my camera position just is not in a great place to catch the good color shifting on this plane. But when it's all done, I'll get some good, um, you know, different angles outside. Um, so anyway, let me take a moment to walk you through kind of the markings on here. And I, got, I have a little bit of cleanup to do with some of the stuff. But let me tell you a little bit about what we've got going on. So first of all, the name on the plane. I have a couple other what if projects that I named after someone that was very important in my life. Um, so the Katie Angel name and number three, uh, this fits into it. Um, the first two were Americanized flankers, Su-27 flankers. Um, and so this being um, just another kind of random sort of project, you know, that never actually existed, I figured I'd, I'd stick with that and make it Katie Angel 3. And that's why I have the, the angel graphic. You can see here that after doing a lot of uh, work to trim down the extra carrier film and everything, I have the clear decals layered so it gives a good opacity. You can still kind of see the edges of some decal film around there, but we've got a nice image of that angel on there without the uh, underlying colors showing through. Same thing for the red which does look a little purplish, um, you know, with the, the background, but uh, nice, rich color on the lettering there. So that worked out. I decided that I was going to marking wise. Okay, so this is going to be in our, you know, fantasy mythical universe here. Um, it is a privateer or a pirate or a mercenary or whatever. So the plane is going to be part of that organization, that squadron, whatever, um, that group. So it is, you know, I took the, what would have been the tail number uh, on the real plane and I made it like, you know, almost like a November registration number. Um, and it is registered in the U.S. So I was able to put that over there. So it's registered in the United States, like that's where the plane lives. I've got some big old pirate markings on there. Um, Air Pirate, which I just liked. I found that design online. I printed it up um, from the Green Stuff World uh, decal set. I grabbed this, which I just, I like the design on it. So this would be like the, the group, the squadron, whatever um, symbol that they use, put it on the wingtip. And I put it on the corner of the vertical stabilizer as well on each side. Taking the last number from the registration, I put it on the wing and those were actually Games Workshop decals. And they just happened to be in the same font and everything, which worked out great. So that's over there for, you know, quick identification, friendly identification from the air. You can see I've started doing some of the um, the standard stenciling that would be on a, on a P51. Um, that's in progress. I've got 
This little bomb guy is from the Green Stuff World, and then these are Games Workshops. So in any kind of war, you usually do more bombing than you do air-to-air -air work. So uh, we've got a lot of bomb marks there. Um, I, If you see on the mouth, I, I painted those little wrinkles back on both sides and the eyes, um, which adds a nice little touch. Now they're in a flat black color, but when we give the gloss coat, they'll all look the same. They'll all be fine. You can see on the, the shark mouth, I also cleaned up any of the white edge that was still showing with the black paint and the eyes too. So it definitely has a nicer look now. It doesn't look like it was just a decal stuck on there and trimmed. It looks, it has all the edges done. I already told you I, I grabbed these kill markings, uh, skulls from Games Workshop. Uh, on the underside of the plane, I used Green Stuff World numbering to replicate the registration number again on the wing, cutting a zero and a half um, to put on the black stripe area. So we've got the same thing. And then the pirate decal over there. I just really like the pirate decal. So it went there. Now that's really just, you know, all the fancy marking. Now, you know, I, th I thought I would just cover this thing in original markings, but at the same time, um, I want the paint job to stand for itself as well. And we're gonna have some stenciling and stuff like that. I didn't wanna go too overboard at all. The prop markings here, they're just from the kit, okay? They normally would be a little bit further down the propeller uh, in real life on these particular um, propeller blades, but I just, I wanted them to be outboard a little bit because um, I, I just liked them like that. So we're ready to put that back on. And um, like I said, some more, some more detail painting to go around. Um, I've got to, you know, just fix up some stuff. I have the landing gear doors prepped, they're painted. Uh, they just need to be affixed when we're all done. So really now it's a process of, of painting the little bits on and getting this um, all set to be finished up. Um, we're going to do some panel line work. Um, we're going to do a little bit more. I, I, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do weathering on this or if I'm going to leave this looking kind of like display ready. I think I'm going to do some light weathering on it. Um, just some exposed metal underneath the paint job because um, if we're gonna put all this the, the kill markings and, and show that it has like a, a combat service um, It would definitely not be this pretty. It wouldn't be repainted after every mission um, Probably not anyway so I'm gonna get to work doing some of that. You'll see some fast-forward action on it some of you won't because I don't want to bore you all to death, but I know there's some people that might want to see some of it. There's this kind of the story of the plane, which explains some of the markings. I know they, they, it's just random, right? But like when you start inventing the storyline behind these one-offs, behind these what-ifs, it helps me anyway to figure out what it's going to go on there because now it has a history. It has a life of its own, um, even though it never actually existed. So let's get to work on the rest of the stuff.
Well, there has been a lot of work done here, uh, not done yet. So I've got this uh, gloss coat over all the panel line and all the, the, the work there. I've still got to do some more. Um, I love the glossy look to this. Um, I think it looks really, really nice, but in reality, I'd be very hard to maintain a very glossy paint job like this with all the weathering I'm doing. So I did a little test. I wasn't sure if the um, the prismatic effect, the color change, would would work as well if I had a, um, a semi-gloss instead of the full gloss. So I just did a little test on the spinner here, and although you probably can't see it, you know, relative to the camera, I'm having trouble with that, but you'll see it at the end. Uh, I don't know if you can see the difference in the finish either. Full gloss, semi-gloss, um, it, it works. It comes out pretty well. We've got some more weathering to do, and uh, then we will give it a, a full semi-gloss and a matte coat for the anti-glare panel, and we're we're like so close to being done with this. I'm so excited to see the finished product um, sitting on the wheels and all ready to go. We have a little bit more weathering, believe it or not, to do, just a little bit. I'm contemplating if I want to do the exhaust staining kind of in, in the slipstream there. Um, I don't know, because I kind of, I, I might not, just because I, maybe I'll do it really light, but I want to see a lot of the plane too. What I didn't really talk a lot about was our drop tanks. So on the drop tanks, we have, again, spilled fuel. Uh, I did this in Vallejo, the anti-sway brackets in Vallejo. Uh, gunmetal blue, which I thought would be a nice match for under the wings. Um, and I think that's going to go actually pretty, it's going to match pretty well once it's all on there. I, you know, I'm walking a balance with the weathering between wanting this to, to show off the colors and the look, but also wanting it to look weathered and appropriate for a plane that's, uh, you know, seen some service and everything. So. It's, it's an odd mix here and there of, of too much weathering, not enough weathering, um, just enough weathering, you know, I mean, and I recognize that. So let's get all of our clear parts unmasked so that 
we're not trying to do that when we have a bunch of other little fragile parts glued on later. This is always one of my favorite parts. I have a fully revealed cockpit, and you can actually see pretty well, but yeah, I mean, you, if you remember the beginning of the video, the clear parts, or sorry, I shouldn't say the beginning of the video. In part one um, and two, the clear parts that I had lined up with the newer kit were much better. You can still get a good view in, uh, in real life anyway, but I should have used the canopy from the, uh, the newer kit. I think now's a good time to mount our propeller and our spinner. So let's get those on. Now the piece that secures everything, um, it's pretty long and it would it's kind of hard, you know, to make sure you get the glue just um, on the post and the cap and not accidentally on the repeller itself. So I personally like to cut them a little bit. I don't know why it's as long as it is. It doesn't need to be that long at all. It can be much shorter. Very nice. All right, we've got a prop. Let's, uh, let's mount some wheels. Here we are, finished, finally. It took a while on this guy. And admittedly, there was some dead time on the workbench, but I am so happy with the way this thing turned out. Um, I, I love it so much. And you know, cause it's a personal project too. It's not just something built kind of out of the box to represent, you know, just one of many, if you kind of know what I mean. So I know that we saw a lot of the process at super speed you know as we were going and i know that we focused a lot on decals and markings but you know here's finally with weathering and everything done and it might be hard to see a lot of the weathering under the lights you know with a semi-gloss surface we'll talk about the weathering options as we go but it turned out just really what I wanted, really what I was expecting, what I was hoping for. And that's great because as we were going, when I did the initial paint job, I was worried. I, I saw those colors come out and I really wasn't sure what I was going to, what I was going to, I saw those initial colors come out and I really wasn't sure how I was going to feel about the final product and everything. In the end, you know, with the weathering and the detailing and everything, it all just came together and I'm thrilled I'm really thrilled so what I'd like to do though is unmount the camera from the tripod because I don't think you've been able to really see the effect of the color change very well with the angle of the camera so in order to really see this plane 
and these paints do what they do, you have to actually you have to actually um, move the camera around to see the difference. You, know, you can see some on the wing there, and then in and again, I swear in real life, you can see this. The color shifting is beautiful. It's just it's it's hard for me to capture it on a camera. But as you change your angle, am I getting it there? The colors just really do change. From that dark blue, light blue, to shades of purple. Um, and all across the plane too. Now it is, the effect is a little toned down when we went, here we go, now you can really see it as we went to the semi-gloss, just a bit. I mean, just a little bit. But if you can imagine, as this was flying, banking, angling, um, you know, and pilots' perspectives were changing towards it, it would just have that, that color shift. It would be great. I would love it. I would love to see it at an air show or something. I wish people could could check it out in real life and and really see the colors you know, change as as they go. But so let's talk about the finished product and kind of the weathering choices and everything. So I wanted to strike a balance between um, you know that kind of heavily used. We have markings that show a lot of use, a lot of action. But I also didn't want to detract from the look of the plane. I wanted you to be able to see the details that went into it and the markings and everything, because those were really important to me. So to start off, and you know, just to sum up what you saw in the video, in case you know the fast motion is a little bit too much, um, I, I picked out some chipping all throughout, moderate amount, not too heavy, especially focusing around panel lines and moving surfaces where there would naturally be wear and tear on the plane. Shows up great in the black, which is a really nice contrast where you can really see it as opposed to, you know, on some of the other colored areas. I focused it on leading areas, uh, leading edge areas on the wings, of course, which I don't know if you're gonna be able to see very well in this light at all, but um, the vertical stabilizer, the horizontals, around the nose, um, and, and again, around access points, and on the wing where people would be working. Um, like you see here, the ammunition access covers and everything, where the pilot would be would be stepping around to get in and out of the plane and things like that. On the underside, went uh, a little bit more, you know, because in real use, these uh, piston engine aircraft operated often from rough fields, dirt fields, grassy fields, so, you know, kicked up rocks and stuff like that um, but I think the weathering you know came out pretty well standard panel line work um, I used well you saw what I used on the video okay, I wanted some fuel spill marks that would tell the story of you know maybe some some fast and hasty refuels uh, what we called in the Air Force pit and goes you know land refuel and get back up in the air and uh, did that. I even did that on the drop tanks. Let's see if they can show nicely. Um, you know, we've got some fuel spillage there. Subtle streaks throughout um, to show, again, well-maintained, just well-used. We've got some heavier streaks on the bottom of the plane, though, where there'd be a little less access to things. Maybe uh, when the plane's cleaned, you know, because this proud pilot would want to clean looking airplane but maybe wouldn't be so easy to clean there'd be a little bit more wear again from the ground things like that um, one of my favorite weathered areas is right here on the registration numbers on the bottom of that wing you can really see a lot of the different effects right there it came out really really nice as for the exhaust effects uh, I wanted to show it but I, I again I wanted it to be subtle so I used some pastels where you can you can really see some exhaust markings in the pattern uh, with the airstream over the wings. Um, it, you know, it, it actually had a little bit of trouble um, sticking to a non-matte surface, but you can see on both sides we've got uh, very kind of realistic exhaust staining, but not too heavy. 
Um, you know, in reality, I think it should be a little heavier, but I'm happy with the way it is just to show off, you know, the, the plane a little bit more. Those are some of the enamel streaks on the bottom of the drop tanks to give them a little worn in look. So overall, I'm really happy with the final look of the plane. Um, I think it gives it that that worn in, well, uh, well used look, but still kind of satisfies my intent here. God, I wish I wish I could really simulate somehow the, the point of view that I have looking at this plane. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing my process with this a little bit. Um, totally worth the time and effort, even with the frustration of having to rebuild after that wing accident. Um, this just, uh, you know, the in the end, it really met the expectations for what I was going for with uh, the whole privateer slash pirate slash mercenary kind of look. Um, it really did turn out kind of exactly as I wanted, and I'm, I'm thrilled. So there's one more project ready for the shelf. So what's next? I'm going to revisit some um, open projects that haven't been finished that you guys have seen videos for. Uh, namely, we've got the, I can't even pronounce this, Machining Krieger, um, the 120th scale Hasegawa. Uh, I've got some great new ideas that are going to change a little bit what we were working on that. I haven't worked on this in probably about a year. And I just, it kind of fell by the wayside as I got excited about new projects, but I have some great ideas now for finishing and redoing, and, and not redoing, but uh, this was initially just going to be a, a what if kind of, uh, what if the U.S. had these in service, but you, it's still going to be sort of that. We've got a U.S. Space Force now, so yeah, that's going to be fun. Um, so another, another custom decal project for this, uh, I don't know. How many people have been with my channel? Small amount of subscribers right now. I'm hoping to build that up. But um, this was, yeah, this was a while ago that I was working on this guy. Um, I'm gonna, so you can catch up on those videos on the channel. They're back there um, before we finish that project up. We've also got a lot of new stuff planned. I have so many. I, I have so many kits that I've got and projects that I, I have in progress right now. I'm just so excited to share them all with everybody. Thanks to everybody who's been a recent subscriber. Thanks to everybody who's shared this channel and, and helped get it out there. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this one. Um, keep building yours. Build them well. And uh, we'll be back again soon with another project.